I thought this was quite an interesting place to start. This is from Lisa Brinovich, of course, from Bloomberg, highlighting the fact that the uh, S&P 500, 10 largest companies in the S&P 500 now account for 39.5% of the total value at the end of July, the most ever, according to Morningstar data. It's AI and a couple of, uh, you know, few companies. Uh, and, of course, people have been trotting out the whole range of different charts um, this is another one which I thought was quite interesting. You know, stock valuations hit a new all-time high based on the PE ratios, um, comparing it with 1929 and 1999 and 965. Which, and which of one's course, that one? Sorry, that's, uh, this, that is, is... this is from Bloomberg. So this is the uh, PE, the trailing PE values. Um, trailing PE, Ford PE, Cape. Yeah. So the, okay, so right. So it's looking at a whole bunch of different measures. Correct. Okay. Exa yep. Exactly. No, that right. one, so it's, it's that one makes sense to me. Yeah. So it's yep. basically it's a it's a mix of different elements. And then this one, which I thought was quite interesting, when you come across this one, this is the uh, the global um, equity risk uh, love um, thing, which is another way of looking at it. And they're saying, oh, you know, you're near the top again. We're in euphoria. There are some various signals. So you know, almost however you look at it. People keep trotting out these charts to say, oh, it's looking pretty toppy, you know. Um, and then just to sort of to finish the story, of course, we've got now a greater proportion than pretty much ever of passive funds under management, which, of course, means that um, if things um, uh, do change, then almost automatically the balance of investments in those uh, passive funds will change too. So does that create more dynamics uh, and more uncertainty. So there's a whole bunch of interesting questions that perhaps we can explore a little bit in terms of, are we really in a toppy situation or is the world looking at it perhaps wrongly? Mm. Yes, yes. And, and <laughs> um, okay, so to, to, I'll, 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 let me give the short version of it and then because I think there's a lot of nuance to this um, that, that is sort of what, that's worth getting into. The short version is... Um, it's vulnerable. Things are expensive, um, and there's lots of different things that could blow up and 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 cause problems. Uh, so that, that's sort of like the the, the big picture. But um, if you keep seeing strong earnings growth, and we are seeing pretty strong earnings growth just coming through, uh, then that's you know that cures everything. So you know pretty much regardless of whatever you're using in terms of these valuation metrics. They're always, you know, price on, well, assuming assuming you're putting price on the top or the bottom, but let's say we're going to put it on the top. You've got price on the top. You have something on the bottom, some sort of valuation metric, cash flow, sales, um, earnings, whatever it is. If that bottom increases and it has been increasing, you know, we're looking at a, um, you know, the sort of 11% last year looking like another 11% this year. 